I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear our words, our words. When we say, you know what we're going to say? We're going to win today, and we're going to Washington, D.C. to drain the swamp. Absolutely. President-elect Donald Trump repeatedly promised to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. if he became elected, and he was. But as the president-elect begins to make his appointment decisions, well, my next guess isn't sure that draining the swamp is actually going to happen. He's former presidential candidate Ron Paul. He joins us now. And thank you for being with us, uh, Congressman. Why, do, why are you skeptical that uh, President-elect Trump will be unable to fulfill his promise? Well, we all we all hope he's successful, but I'm skeptical because, uh, you know, I got involved in politics in the early 70s, and my goal was to drain the swamp. And I think every single year since there, Republican or Democrats in charge, the government always got bigger. And uh, that's why I, I think he has a great idea, and there's a lot of enthusiasm for it, but there's a lot of names thrown around that... Uh, you know, that might be an administration that aren't exactly uh, the kind of individual that will change things. The other th concern I have is even when there may be some people that get into the administration, and there may be some sincerity, because I can remember in the past when they would put somebody at the head of the post office and say, he's a businessman and he's going to make it work like a business. Well, we know that's a false uh, <laughs> oh, assumption. Yes, we do. <laughs> It, it, they do that. But there's also the deep state, the invisible government, the shadow government, the people in the military industrial complex, the financial industry, the Federal Reserve, and uh, it, it's, well, the good, it's so if, big if, and powerful. If, if, let me add, what I would say is, and it's a term that might not be invoked today, but the good old boy network. I mean, I had uh, the honor of working in Washington for about a year and a half. And what you saw were people who would say one thing condemning these kinds of practices, but on the other hand, being a part of a system in which they were making their livelihoods. And I think that's what infuriates people. When, when I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, that kind of duplicity is what infuriates people. And if President-elect Trump doesn't clean that up, doesn't he risk alienating people in the Midwest and his, his base of supporters? Oh, a absolutely, and that is the tragedy. And some of, some of the things, he might be very sincere, and he might try to get some good people, but the job may be overwhelming. But, uh, but what I have suggested is so far I haven't seen the kind of individual that will, will really do the job, and, mm -hmm. and that's where the real challenge is. But uh, there's so much momentum involved. Sure. You know, the momentum, where do you, where do you cut? Matter of fact, even the campaign gave me no hints. Other Republican campaigns have given me more hints that they maybe really want to get rid of the Department of Education and the Department of Energy. I, I didn't hear about that. I've heard, well, they were, we, we tried monetary policy. It hasn't worked all that well. But what we need now is fiscal policy, which means spend money and deficits don't matter. It's a Keynesian approach. We need oh, infrastructure. Yes. That's a 1930s issue. And we're going to rebuild the military. And of course, I don't worry about rebuilding the military. I think we have a pretty good military yeah. and pretty strong. And we can defend ourselves but against anybody who would dare, let me interrupt dare you. attack us. Let, let me interrupt you on this because we've been playing a cabinet roulette, I'll call it, as the different people go in and out of Trump Tower. Some of your supporters actually want you to be named to a cabinet position. <laughs> and I know this has been asked and you've denied it. But Honestly, are you being considered, and is there a position you would accept? No, I'm not being considered. I don't think that's uh, the slightest possibility that that would happen. Uh, but, uh, no, I think... I think if somebody was very honest and would like uh, to ha give me, have me give them an opinion about something, I would do my very best to give an, an honest opinion. Mm -hmm. But to be in there, I don't think an individual like myself would blend in because I think I know the system well enough that it would be too frustrating, uh, you know, if I was appointed to the Federal Reserve. Yeah, but I, I was going to bring this up. The, I want to get rid of the Federal right. Reserve, so I'm not going to be a very obedient member of Janet yeah. Yellen, uh, Janet uh, Yellen's not... term is up in 2018, and I was going to say there's one <laughs> position I know you would take. It would be to, the position of being the last chairman of the Federal Reserve. 
Yeah, if, if the sentiment was there and everybody was ready for it, and you know, who knows what might be ready because central banking in the last 10 years has lost a lot of credibility. When I started talking about the Federal Reserve, nobody even cared about it. But in the last 10 years, they're starting, oh, the Fed, they're part of the problem. They kept interest rates too, too low, too long, and they're the problem that we have. And here they have interest rates at zero percent mm -hmm. for, for all these years, and there's no improvement. So, yes, it's getting to the point, but I think what's going to happen. There's not going to be one individual like myself who's all of a sudden going to be able to turn the switch. Uh, I think they'll eventually sort of self-destruct their policies. And, and in a way right now, you know, look at what the interest rates are going doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody said if the Fed twisted the switch and raised interest rates a quarter of a point, the stock market would crash. But look at what's happened. They've gone up. The market sort of has driven them up. And the stock market is skyrocketing. That's how yeah. unpredictable it is. But uh, eventually, though, money, economic, central economic planning through monetary policy that we have tried has exhausted itself, right. and something new will have to come about. You get the last word. Ron Paul, thank you very much for joining us on Risk and Reward. You're